Hi guys, it is a gray, gloomy, stormy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here. Um, where are we? The first full day of the fall of 2021. That would be Thursday, September 23rd, 2021. And we are in the middle of our first flash flood watch uh, of the fall of 2021. Looks like we're going to dodge the bullet here by a few inches on the culvert. So as long as I don't have to uh, be getting my truck to higher ground and sandbagging my shack, I'm going to do what I, I'm going to try to start doing every Thursday. I I think I missed last Thursday, where we're going to go over to what uh, I have determined to be one of the best chroniclers of the collapse out there, and a place you wouldn't think to look, oilprice.com. Oilprice.com. I highly recommend you checking in every few days uh, with them in... Uh, I'm just going, we're going to look at a bunch of articles. I'm, I'm actually surprised that oilprice.com is not talking about this story a lot more, which is actually about coal, not oil, I guess because uh, they don't really cater to coal investors at oil prices. It's, it's mainly for oil and gas investors trying to keep pulse of what's going on to, you know, figure out where to put their investments to make money off the collapse of a planet. So maybe that's the reason they played it down. So this is, uh, but this is, you know, a big story all over the mainstream media. This is uh, kind of all that, uh, Oilprice.com has to say about it, China to end coal power plant construction abroad. China will stop building new coal power plants abroad, President Xi Jinping said at this week's virtual UN meeting. So, I'm not sure. I mean, I've read like 20 of these articles uh, and I think this is the entire statement, quote, China will step up support for other developing countries in developing green and low carbon energy and will not, will not build new coal-fired power projects abroad. Um, China is responsible for more than 70% of coal power plants built today globally. Um, oh, I'm sorry, seven, more than 70% of coal power plants being built today globally relies on funding from China. And um, so anyway, they're playing this straight. Uh, it's, it's just like every uh, every mainstream media article, pretty much, uh, is just playing this story straight. This sounds to me, this is just me, because I am a China basher. I, I think everyone will agree that Sam Mitchell is a China basher. For, for this planet eater to make this claim with absolutely no amplification and clarification of that blanket statement is kind of like Sancho Panza saying, uh, he is going to stop chasing chipmunks everywhere on the planet except for bugs in a jar farm. Okay. Uh, well, he won't even say that. It, it, it's like, yeah, that, I guess that would be like uh, Sancho saying, I am not going to chase chipmunks anywhere except bugs in a jar farm. And, and, even, and, and even this guy from China did not put that little, that little asterisk by it. But I actually, I, I'm going to step out of script here. It was actually Reuters News, the one article I found. The one article I found from good old Reuters News, because oilprice.com wasn't interested in this. Uh, take it away, Reuters, and then we'll get back to oil price. 
despite widespread optimism about Xi's announcement, his carefully worded statement revealed few details and left room for existing projects to continue. There are more than 20 Chinese finance coal-fired power Plant, power plants under, construct, under construction already in South Africa, Pakistan, Indonesia, Vietnam, Bangladesh, Zimbabwe, Serbia, and the United Arab Emirates. Um, another 17 are in the planning stages. So anyone who believes that that China in the middle of these uh, power plant construction uh, is, is just going to, you know, the ones that are already being built are just going to yank the money. Uh, yeah, right. Now the other 17 in the planning stages, uh, I am hitting the you-know-what button. Uh, this is... Uh, Yan Keen, lead carbon analyst at some, uh, one of these Chinese energy analysts, Yan Keen, quote, the details over China's overseas coal exit have not been defined yet, including timetable, eligibility, and separation between public and private financing. Yes, and uh, the, the new commitment also does not address China's plans to expand its own coal-fired power plants, as we were talking about in Manga Bay last week. China's domestic coal program accounts for more than half of all coal-powered uh, coal powered plants under construction throughout the world. So are you following? So, okay, so China is bankrolling 70% uh, of the, uh, the coal-fired power plants uh, globally, but only 20% of the total is outside of China. That China, the, the coal plants inside China are five-sevenths of that total. Um, in, anyway, where, what, what was Manga Base? I, I'm thinking, uh, I remember, was it 43? Uh, that are, are, are being built in China and then uh, when you really start disentangling this number uh, of those you know outside of China that China is, is participating it's really for only 40 percent of the total so it's not like China is 100% uh, funding this. But anyway, uh, any, just throw this in your, in your hopium. Uh, I, I should have had this story. I actually thought of putting this story in the hopium roundup. It, it, it's a bunch of greenwashing crap is what it is. But anyway, uh, we're going to... Good Lord, and... and so, uh, let's just go through, and I don't know, no particular order here, guys. Um, let's see. Well, okay, we just talked about coal, so now let's go over, look at gas, natural gas in China. <clears throat> China's gas, meaning natural gas, not gasoline, although probably say the same for gasoline too. China's gas consumption growth potential stunning. Yes. China's natural gas consumption is growing faster than any other country in the Asia Pacific. And I would say, uh, I don't know why they limited it to Asia. It's any country on the planet. Uh, I'm sure China's natural gas consumption is growing faster than any other country in at least Asia uh, and, and probably the entire planet. 
according to one of these uh, analysts, uh, <clears throat> China's energy market is the most dynamic in terms of growth. Quoting uh, Alexei Miller, uh, CEO of one of these one of these Planet Eaters, quote: Every year, it simply stuns us with the growth with the growth rate of consumption, and 2021 is no exception. Close quote. Miller added that in the first half of this year, China's natural gas consumption increased by more than 15 percent and imports increased by more than 23 percent. Quote, this means that by the end of this year, the forecast estimates of consumption in China will amount to 360 billion cubic meters and the volume of imports will have hit 160 cubic, uh, 160 billion cubic meters. Um, Miller sees China's natural gas imports, imports rising, pretty much doubling from this year to 300 billion cubic meters per year by 2035, with gas consumption in Asia Pacific as a whole growing growing by one and a half trillion cubic meters by 2040, 60 percent of which will need to be imported. So obviously what you take away from this story, if you want to make money off the collapse of a planet, you want to uh, invest your money in natural gas. Uh, okay, but of course the big gas story uh, this week is, is not so much China, but it's what's going on over there in Europe. Good Lord with the, uh, the price of uh, natural gas. Let's see if I can find one. Um, how about this one? All right. Uh, <clears throat> European industry reels from record gas prices. I'm ready to put five dollars into the natural gas market. <clears throat> European industry reels from record gas prices. Okay. Reports in the media that natural gas prices in the UK have more than quadrupled over the last year to highs of 180 pounds per, therm per thermal unit from around 40 pounds uh, this time last year are making headlines. This is largely because of the impact on small startup gas suppliers who have been forced out of business in recent weeks. Um, however, natural gas and energy prices broadly have been rising strongly. This has been the case not just in the UK but across Europe for much of this year. And so, why is this? How about demand from China? Wow, imagine that! Uh, demand from China is one reason. Severe weather in Texas uh, have both led to increasing demand and, and constrained supply. And don't forget uh, exceptionally low winds, exceptionally low winds are failing to generate sufficient renewable wind energy. Yes. Um, as such, the, all this has created the perfect conditions for speculators such as oilprice.com investors to drive prices uh, higher. Uh, Anyway, uh, around 
around half of UK's electricity is generated by natural gas-fired power plants. Uh, the situation is exacerbated by unplanned outages of nuclear power plants this year. Furthermore, fire shut down a main power cable importing electricity from France. Good Lord. Uh, the UK relies heavily on natural gas for both residential and industrial use. Uh, Anyway, this goes on and on, and, and, and there's actually, some, somebody sent me one of these, uh, there, there's actually fear-mongering over there in the rumor sphere, as Alistair calls it, that uh, prices could rise to one million, one million uh, dollars per British thermal unit uh, before this is all over. You know that there is no end in sight. Uh, you, you can just pick any number and uh, where where this is going and, and this is all over uh, Europe going into winter. Um, let's see uh, Here's more. Uh, anyway, we there's protest in Italy somewhere. When I just had this on, they were talking about a uh, protest in Italy. People taking to the streets. Uh, huh. Well. Don't see that one. Okay, uh, uh, let's move on to. Good Lord, guys! I I could pretty much just throw a dart in here. All right, what's going on with Russia? We haven't we haven't uh, talked about Russia here today. <clears throat> let's check in with Russia. Russia expects to boost oil product production to post-Soviet high in 2022. Yes, <clears throat> Russia sees raising its oil production to an average of 11.24 million barrels per day in 2022, which would be an 8% increase from this year, um, this is quoting estimates from the Russian finance industry. Um, the expected output includes both crude oil and condensate and does not discriminate them. Uh, so that makes it very confusing. <clears throat> Russia expects its crude or that the total market to return to pre-pandemic levels by May of next year. Uh, anyway, guys, I could. Uh, oh, here is the story. I'm sorry. Um, protest break out in Europe is electricity prices soar. I'm, I'm getting a little bit out of order uh, in these stories. <clears throat> Depleted natural gas inventories and low wind speeds have led to a surge in electricity prices across Europe, putting pressure on governments as consumers protest against surging power bills ahead of the winter heating season. Um, prices from the UK to Spain have jumped to all-time highs as people in Spain have taken to the streets while uh, prices across Europe are s so high they could become a drag on an economic recovery from the corona panic. Uh, consumers in Spain are protesting against utilities as households now pay around double 
the price for electricity compared to one year ago. Ireland is screwed here. Uh, all of Europe is bracing for further spikes in power prices when the heating season starts to really kick up. Uh, the natural gas levels in storage are significantly below normal. There you go. For European consumers, energy prices are at a pain point. Yes, and this year surging prices feed into inflation and the cost of all these other goods. Uh, the knock-on effects. Good Lord, any one of these could, you know, I could make a full video out. All right, we've talked about coal and gas, a uh, little bit of um, oil. Let's go over, let's stay with oil uh, and go over to India. Let's check in with India. What's going on in India? Uh, this week. India's oil imports jumped to four-month high in August. <clears throat> India's oil imports surged by 23 percent month-on-month to reach a four-month high of 4.2 million barrels per day flowing into India and refiners there preparing to ramp up more crude throughputs for the festival season that starts next month. Um, India's oil imports rose by 6.2% uh, in August of this year compared to August of last year. Uh, There you go. Indian imports of U.S. oil. So anybody who does not think that the U.S. So I mean, we are the major importer of oil to India. Uh, Indian imports of U.S. oil jumped to a five-month high while shipments from Latin America increased to their highest uh, this year. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, let's see. Let's check in with copper. Global copper output on the rise as prices soar. So maybe if you uh, want to make your uh, money in the copper, just in case you are not familiar with what a copper mine looks like. Uh, if you really, guys, if you really want to uh, to make money off the collapse of a planet, here is the picture of a copper mine. So whenever you're reading these stories uh, about all of these renewable energy saving the planet, where do you think a, a lot of this, if not most of this copper, is going? It's going into uh, the renewable energy. This is the UN's definition of saving the planet. For if, just in case, for anybody who does not understand that the renewable energy uh, trans whatever they call that word, transition, will, uh, will mean ramping up mining by, they're saying, 500 percent by 2050. <clears throat> All right, global copper mine production picked up by 4.9 percent during the first half of this year. The international Copper Study Group said this week, uh, and then they broke up uh, 
Who do you think is the world's top copper producer? That would be Chile. Uh, meanwhile, Peru, the second biggest copper producer, saw its output bounce back by 14% year over year. <clears throat> Refined production of copper is up 3.2%. Um, okay, so of course we have to get China into this equation. China, in the month of July, China imported 424,000 220 tons of copper and copper products, uh, which was actually a decline from the 428,000 tons it imported in June. Uh, anyway, uh, so maybe copper mining is where you should be investing your money if you want to make money off the collapse of a planet. And, and guys, never let it be said. I mean, there is a bunch of, of money to be made uh, off of the collapse of a planet. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, that's more about all right, what's going on in Iran. Uh, I, I, I could go on and on with this. Uh, okay, two more. Uh, let's go over to Iran <clears throat> for any oil investor. Iran looks to attract $145 billion in new oil investment. Iran is drafting plans to attract as much as $145 billion uh, domestic and foreign investments in its oil industry over the next eight years. There you go. This is Iranian, Iranian oil minister Javad Alji, quote, We plan to invest $145 billion in the development of our oil industry over the next four to eight years. Hence, I welcome the presence of domestic and foreign investors in the industry. And uh, take a wild guess, Iran is also working to boost cooperation with Chinese companies, the minister added, meaning Chinese-backed oil companies. So you better believe any money that, that China is taking out of coal will be just shunted over to oil and gas. Uh, there you go. Uh, China is Iran's biggest trade partner. Do you think so? And will soon be uh, Afghanistan's biggest trade partner if it's not already. I could. Uh, I, I, I'm surprised that uh, I don't see anything uh, in OilPrice.com about the $1 trillion in natural resources being left on the table. Yeah, right. Uh, when the U.S. is out of Afghanistan, we shall see about where that one who eat gobbles up that $1 trillion uh, on the table. But one more. This is the, the one that just came on since I started this rant, we have a hot off the presses. We're going to wind up in Italy 
the energy transition to cost Italy $760 billion this decade. And then I don't, this is just one little country, Italy. So you can, you can, uh, obviously extrapolate this over the rest of the planet. <clears throat> All right. The price tag for the energy transition, you know, from fossil fuels to that clean green energy uh, in Italy could be over $760 billion dollars over the next 10 years, the president of the local employers association said this morning, uh, according to the head of the influential business association, the soaring gas and energy prices and spikes in prices of key metals, can you say copper, could slow down the economic recovery from the corona panic globally. Uh, there you go. Uh, good luck. Okay, how about the rest of the planet? The world, the world will need to invest up to 173 trillion dollars. 173 trillion dollars in greener energy infrastructure and supply over the next 30 years if it wants to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2050. Uh, there you go. Uh, the energy transition that would be compatible with a net zero world in 2050 would need rapid scaling of investment. Yes, adding that quote, the route to net zero remains yet uncertain, close quote. There you go. All sorts of ways to make gobs of money off of the collapse of a planet. Uh, and sometimes the best place to uh, find out what's really going on is listen to your enemies. Listen very carefully to your enemies. And if planet eaters are the enemy of the planet, if you are a friend of the planet, listen in on what the enemies of the planet are saying. But I've got to wrap up this rant and go uh, fire up some natural gas. Probably, my guess is, some fracked propane to... Uh, Cook a BLT. Good lordy. I think I can just light a match right here on a... Yes? Good God, little dog. I can cook a damn pound of bacon by just lighting Sancho's farts. Get out there and light your farts while you still can. Bye, guys.